You know, I don't understand why people don't spend the money on it because you'll come to me, oh, I want to have a baby. And then it's like, oh boy, well, you should have done ACG the whole time. What is up, everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907wire.com. Keep on code Russo. ASMR spritz intelligent elephant hydrogen this isn't out yet but there's your noises definitely a way more heavy scent than the carbon fyi all other links and discounts in the comment below to support this type of content welcome back to education today i'm going to be going over hcg human coronic gonadotropin which is a common fertility medicine that has been discontinued in the United States as the overall universal TRT fertility alongside TRT drug, which I'm going to discuss. I'm going to discuss the history via the Anabolics 11th edition. Highly recommend you pick one of these books up and let's get into it. So chronic anatotropin is found in pregnant females in the early months of pregnancy in the placenta. And the whole goal is it's jacking up progesterone, which is keeping the pregnancy occurring, right? You need high levels of progesterone. So that is why HCG exists in, you know, a natural setting. So HCG has a little bit of FSH effects, follicle stimulating hormones. So there's the two fertility markers you want to look at on your blower. It doesn't tell you everything, but FSH and LH. HCG has a tiny bit of FSH properties. HMG or actually recompetent FSH would definitely be a better option for that if you're trying to fix that number for fertility. But it was discovered in clinical that hcg is basically an lh mimetic and that it's a synthetic form of lh that can be exogenously added in alongside hrt trt to maintain fertility as well as just recovering fertility increasing fertility lh is the main signaler to the testicles so hcg was discovered in 1920 they were doing pituitary extracts of animals to get it. And then over time, they switched towards pregnant women's urine and refining it out of that. And over time, you know, during the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, HCG gained a more cult-like following for the HCG diet, um, HCG being marketed for women with obesity and all these sorts of things kept popping up as HCG gained more and more and more steam. You didn't really find it being used in male fertility at all until later past the 1960s. All right, so that's pretty much the history out of the Anabolics 11th edition. This is the OG fertility drug that is a little bit misunderstood in my opinion. Um, I do have some big opinions on HCG. And first off, I know there's gonna be comments like, Russo, can you talk about gonorrelin? You know, gonorrelin's here and I haven't heard you make any videos on that. I'll have Andrew link the HCG versus gonorrelin. I mean, I could rehash that video, but it's pretty much the same exact thoughts. I could add more detail to it, but overall I like HCG better than gonorrelin. You know, it just it is what it is. I don't know why. And this is getting into the drama. HCG was pulled and replaced with gonorrelin. I mean, it just doesn't make that much sense to me. HCG is superior. I'm not saying gonorrelin doesn't work. Gonorrelin won't work alongside HRT, TRT. It's just higher up in the chain where HCG is right there. It's literally a mimetic, so they went higher up on the chain. Don't really know the theory behind switching that. Preferably, HCG is better, in my opinion, especially if you're already messing around exogenously with androgens and you have different sensitivity to androgens depending on the amount of your abuse. And is the gonorrhea going to be working if the hypothalamus isn't functioning or the HPTA is kind of like offline, whereas HCG is just boom, a mimetic that could kickstart it i don't know i'm just speculative throwing shit out right i don't know any of that in like hard cold facts what i do know is that the hcg diet is kind of funny so can you run hcg as just a cycle alone yeah you could run hcg as a cycle alone is it suppressive yes 
it is suppressive. HCG should not be used in PCT in my opinion. It should be used the entire time you're on any synthetic androgen and dosage depending, right? Uh, we're good rule of thumb if you're not going to pull blood work constantly because in the United States, blood work is fucking expensive out of pocket when you're not going to your doctor. In other countries, it's just like fucking 50 bucks, boom, you get to see it not here. You would look to see if your testicles are atrophying. If they're atrophying, get add in 500 IU twice a week react to that if you're way beyond atrophied into almost nothing then that gets into the territory of these insane dosages of hcg that i don't think i mean it's in the fertility studies that i've read people always want to say like oh you only need 500 iu twice a week that's a good place to start you don't know how you react because a lot of people get shit tons of water retention from hcg they hate it they feel like shit and the estrogen goes all over the place and you know they don't like it so that's why start low figure out what works for you some people are super sensitive to it some people are not going to react unless it's massive amounts and especially if you're trying to recover dead stop turned off fertility then <laughs> You're going to be looking at doing high enough dosages that are going to actually stimulate the balls, which could be upwards of 2000, right? I'm not going to get into the actual, I don't want people copying it completely because I feel like you should experiment on your own and see what's slowly working. But I read into, can you desensitize from your own natural LH from abusing, you know, synthetic mimetic, which is HCG. And from my readings, and I used to say, because careful with hcg because that was like the coin when i read in the forums that you could overdo it with hcg and then you wouldn't react to your own lh and then you won't have a functioning hpta correctly if you messed up the sensitivity that was like the bro science theory these fertility studies have shown something different they've shown that there's really no sensitivity decrease again you can feel free to argue with me in the comments but that's one of the big giant myths is the dosages with hcg some of them need to be really astronomically higher and if you're in this position of you're trying to recover fertility maybe read into the actual fertility studies where they showcase you know a year of hcg treatment the dosages get higher and higher and then the fertility is restored they might be using higher dosages than you think I think the most common mistake with HCG is, like I said, using it post-cycle. You want to be using it on cycle, and then if you want to get off, you want to bridge into clomiphene or enclomiphene, which is the better version of clomiphene, and then Novadex. And then taper off that, then go on to natural test boosters, get in the optimal body fat, get your diet in check. Once all that half-life's out, then you can see where your natural testosterone, your natural FSH, LH is in that. If you do HCG into your PCT, you constantly have this exogenously added in mimetic of LH, but might throw off the whole system because it might not ever recover the LH because it's already being hyper-stimulated by what you're injecting. I used to do HCG and PCT too. I was an idiot. I learned, I stopped doing it. I I just do it on cycle to maintain my testicular size, keep the lights on, and then I bridge into clomiphene and clomiphene novadex and come off. That's if you want to try to fully come off. If you're trying to recover your fertility, I'd recommend reading into high dosage HCG, the actual fertility studies where they recover some really crazy hypergonadal guys and you can see exactly what dosages they used in a medical setting. I'm just saying that because like, if I throw out some of the numbers they use, you'd be like, oh man, really? They used all that? It's in a medical setting. It's a fucking study. You can go read it, doctors did it. And I would do that stacked with recompetent FSH. So recompetent FSH is gonna fill the other void. I would stick away from using HMG if you're really trying to get your fertility up. Although HMG is is the cheaper option for the FSH. What do I think of HCG in a nutshell? I think HCG is one of the, you know, I don't understand why people don't spend the money on it because you'll come to me, oh, I want to have a baby. And then it's like, oh boy, well, you should have done HCG the whole time. You should have been watching your LH, FSH on your blood work. Make sure it's always in range, always stimulatory towards the testicles. Get off everything and have a kid you can because you kept them stimulated now that you didn't keep them stimulated it's going to be very brutal to recover fully you know destroyed testicles it's possible and that's the things i was reading into before i got on camera it's possible but yeah
that's just something that bothers me. It's like, come on, you're going to spend all this money on the cycle and you're not going to buy a couple of vials at HCG each month, like 30 bucks a vial, but you're, sp <laughs> you're spending all this money on gear that's going to shut you off. And then it's just like, eventually you'll either want to cruise with working testicles or you'll want to get off completely and you definitely need working testicles. It's like, why do we need to atrophy them into nothing and be like, oh, well, I don't have, want to have a kid. I don't care about my nuts. Well, then you're thinking thinking of how ATG could impact the brain, completely impact neurosteroid release. I mean, you might find that your neurosteroids get thrown off if your testicles aren't working, which could mean you're on test, but your libido randomly stops working. It's like some of those things people don't take into consideration. And I hope that over time, it's just a standard. It's like a standard. I got to keep my ACG in there. If I'm on a big blast and my nuts are atrophying, I don't have to do all this crazy stuff because if you are in the boat where you want to do all the crazy stuff to recover fertility, it sucks. The last thing I wanted to touch on with ACG is I think if you got pregnant on HCG, this is a Russo source, trust me, bro, is that your chances of having a female would be higher than having a male. That would be my final thing to say is that I read it somewhere. I've talked about it on this channel before. I'm trying to pull in my brain the specifics of that, but I think there is a higher chance to get a female on HCG. So again, you might want to get off everything completely after you recover the recover the fertility knock your girl up has the best chance for a son theoretically i'm saying this all with a grain of salt because boston lloyd did the craziest fertility protocol and if you go dig around his videos and r.i.p boston he <laughs> announced the dosages and they were astronomical compared to most people he had a son completely healthy son so it kind of just shuts up my theory so i'll say the probability of you having a girl right the fertility doctor will be like you want to get off everything have your kid then go back on and then if you have issues getting it up and doing the deed while you're off then it becomes a point while like okay we'll knock her up while you're on they're normally going to try and go that direction i'm saying that you don't have to get fully off to knock up a girl and like there are guys who knock up girls blasting trend and stuff meaning like their nuts are basically completely shut off, but there's always still some swimmers in there. If you want the best chance, the best variables, then you would have to get off, clean out, then do the deed, then you could get back on. If you can't recover the HPTA because it's too damaged, then you would do it with ACG on top. Would that impact your chances for a girl more than a guy? I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. I read that somewhere, and I thought that'd be interesting to throw in this video at the end. I will see you guys in my next video.